Hello, Grace Montessori. Um, I am educator Emily, and this is... I am educator Katie. And we are from Zoo Montana, and today we're going to be leading you guys in a little course talking about vertebrates and invertebrates, what makes them different, as well as the five different classes of animals. Birds, amphibians, fish, reptiles, and mammals. Now, as I'm sure you guys can see, both me and Educator Katie are wearing masks, all right? And this is just to keep us and our animals safe during this time. We understand it might look a little bit funny, but the person who is going to be telling you about the animal, they will not be wearing a mask. So that will help you be able to understand who we are talking about at that time. Now, when we are talking about all of these animals, we're going to be talking about characteristics of each animal. What's a characteristic, Miss Katie? Characteristics are just the different things on an animal or in their body that make them different from other groups. Think about like hair or feathers or scales or other things like that. Awesome! So now Miss Katie is going to lead us off and we're going to start talking all about invertebrates. All right, my friends, so invertebrates are animals that don't have a backbone. Now a backbone, can you feel on your body this part right here? Those are your vertebrae or backbones. And a lot of animals in the world have backbones. However, 97% of animals do not have a backbone. This is our invertebrate group, our no vertebrate group. Now invertebrates usually have segmented bodies or bodies that have different parts that are connected in strange ways. Think about the leg of a crab, okay? So they have segmented bodies and we are going to meet our first invertebrate and we're gonna talk about her and how she represents this class of invertebrates. All right, my friends, so this is Taboo and Taboo is a rose-haired tarantula and she is in that group of invertebrates. She doesn't have a backbone like the ones that we have and her bones are on the outside of her body. She is, has an exoskeleton an outside skeleton, okay? Also, remember that thing that we said, that characteristic, that thing that makes her different? Remember, we said that she has segmented parts on her body because she's an invertebrate. That's what those little legs are showing you. These guys, invertebrates, are ectothermic, which means outside temperature, meaning that she does not control the inside of her body's temperature. We do, and we'll talk about mammals a little bit more later but invertebrates have to rely on their surroundings for the temperature of their body. So down here in our filming studio, it's about 75 or almost 80 degrees. So the inside of her body is warming up to about 75 or 80 degrees. If we went outside on a cold winter day, her blood would cool down or her body would cool down to the cold temperature outside. So that's what ectothermic means. And most critters that are invertebrates, no backbone, are cold-blooded. These guys go through something called metamorphosis, which means their body changes as they grow. And it's a little different than how you change as you grow. You just kind of stretch up and get a little bit taller, maybe a little bit out this way too. But these guys, their bodies change and they actually shed or molt between each part of their metamorphosis. In fact, what I have right here is Taboo's last molt. As you can see, it's just the bones of her last molt. She came right out of that. You can also see there's no backbone there. All right, my friends, let's say goodbye to Taboo for now. Bye, Taboo. Bye, Taboo. All right, my friends. So we just talked about invertebrates, the group of animals that does not have a backbone. But this is an example of a backbone. You can't see yours because it's inside your body. But these are those bones that I was saying, those vertebrae. Those are the bones of the inside of your back. Isn't that cool? That's what a vertebrate has. All vertebrates have bones that look at least something like this. Some of them are smaller, like that big. Some of them are huge, like a giraffe's vertebra. But all vertebrates have a backbone. All right, everybody. The next group that we are going to be talking about are the fish. Now, right now at Zoo Montana, our koi pond is not up and running. So we are gonna be working with this trout model for this part of the lesson. Now, fish are pretty cool. Not only are they considered vertebrates, which means they have a backbone, but fish, depending on the species or kind of fish, they can have either a bony skeleton or a skeleton made of cartilage, which is what your ears and your nose are made out of. It's a lot more flexible than bone. Now, fish lay eggs. However, they're not hard-shelled eggs. They're very teeny, teeny, tiny 
and they can lay up to thousands of these and they will lay them in the water. As I'm sure you guys all know, fish are going to be fully aquatic animals and they're going to be the only fully aquatic or water loving animals that we're going to be talking about today in our course. Because they live underwater, fish have to breathe through a very specialized characteristic called gills and their gills are going to be right there, right behind their eyes. And these gills function just like our lungs. They help the fish breathe air or oxygen underwater. Now, fish are also ectothermic, which means they don't create their own body heat. So the temperature of the fish will depend on the temperature of the water that it is living in. Another fun characteristic of fish, if you've ever felt one, you've noticed that they have weird scaly and slimy skin, which is another really unique thing about these animals. Now, say goodbye to our trout friend. All right, my Grace Montessori friends, the next animal group we're going to talk about are amphibians. Can you say amphibians? Good job. Now amphibians are animals that are kind of like fish because they live sometimes in the water, but they also can live on land. Now you probably already know which animals are amphibians. You just may not know them by that name. Amphibians are things that are like frogs and toads and salamanders and newts. They are a super cool group of animals and we are about to meet our first amphibian. All right, my friends, this is Sally. Sally is a tiger salamander and you can find tiger salamanders in Montana. Note though, Miss Emily here is wearing a mask, right? To make sure that she keeps Sally here safe. She also made sure that her hands were very clean because amphibians can breathe and drink through their skin. How crazy is that? You drink and breathe, right? You drink with your mouth and you can breathe with your mouth or your nose. These guys do have nose and they have a mouth, but they can drink and breathe through their skin. That means that if you find one of these guys in the wild, even a frog, a toad, or a salamander, make sure that you give them their space. If you have something like sunscreen or bug spray on your hands, you can make them sick if you pick them up. So if you have to pick them up, make sure your hands are clean and wet first. Now, salamanders are in that group that we call amphibians, like we said. They are vertebrates, so they have a backbone. It's all the way down their body, just like yours is all the way down your body behind your head. And these guys, kind of like our no backbone, our invertebrate friends, they also go through metamorphosis. You see this cycle right here that a frog goes through? That is an example of metamorphosis. Salamanders, when they first hatch out of really soft jelly-like eggs, they're not hard like a bird egg, their soft jelly-like eggs, when they hatch, they have external gills, kind of like an axolotl animal. Now, these guys also lay their eggs in the water, or at least in a place that is damp. Now, amphibians are super cool animals, and I like them a lot. Tiger salamanders like Sally here, like we said, they live here in Montana and they are amazing predators, kind of why they're called tiger salamanders. They will eat mostly bugs, but if they can catch them, they'll eat eggs, they'll eat small fish, they'll eat little tadpoles, they'll also eat baby mice. Isn't that crazy? All right, my friends, let's say goodbye to Sally. Bye, Sally. All right, Grace Montessori, are you guys ready for the next group of animals? The next group has dry scaly skin, so they're different from our fish friends. They are cold-blooded, kind of like our invertebrate, or no backbone friends, also like our fish friends, and like our amphibian friends. This group of animals is called reptiles, and you're about to meet your first reptile friend. Today, we have with us Grumpy, the hognose snake. Now snakes are in the group of reptiles. They have dry, scaly skin. Fun fact about that, a lot of people think that snakes have slimy skin, but that's only because their scales often look shiny to our eyes and they can be cold to the touch, which when we touch that, our brain says, hey, this is slimy. But Grumpy here and all reptiles are not slimy. They have dry, scaly skin. Some of them, like the turtles that live in water, their skin might be wet, but they do have scaly skin. Reptiles have that dry, scaly skin, okay? Now that's one characteristic or thing that makes this group different from other groups. 
Another characteristic is their eggs. Snakes and other reptiles do lay eggs, but their eggs are not hard like a bird egg and they're not squishy jelly-like eggs like an amphibian or frog egg. Their eggs are kind of soft and leathery, kind of like a belt. They're a little bit squishy, but they're also hard enough to protect the baby inside the egg. Also, reptiles are cold-blooded. And we talked about that earlier, but just as a reminder, cold-blooded animals can't control their body temperature. So our friend Grumpy here is enjoying the nice warm air in our studio. But if we took him outside when it's nice and cold, his blood would cool down. Your blood is not going to do that. No matter how cold you get, your blood stays warm because we use energy in our bodies from food to heat our blood inside. All right, my friends, we're going to say goodbye to Grumpy now. Bye, Grumpy. All right, everybody, it's time to meet Sydney. She is one of Zoo Montana's birds, and we're going to talk about some classifications that make birds birds. Now, Sydney is a laughing kookaburra, which means she is native to Australia. Not all birds are going to be native to Australia, but they're all going to have four characteristics that are the same. If you look at Sydney, you see that she's got this stuff covering her body. It's not hair like us or scales like reptiles. It's feathers, just like this. All birds are going to have feathers. That is one of the really cool adaptations that makes them birds. Sydney can fly which means she's gotta be pretty, pretty light to be able to lift herself off into the air. So all birds have hollow bones for flight. It makes them a lot lighter and more aerodynamic, which is just a fancy word for meaning they can soar through the air very, very well. All birds will also lay hard-shelled eggs like this. So it's hard to the touch, unlike the soft-shell eggs that reptiles will lay. And birds like Sydney, they will incubate their eggs, they will sit on them, in the nest once they have laid. And a fun fact about all birds is they are actually all related to dinosaurs, which is super cool. And it's actually thought that because of this, that maybe all dinosaurs also had feathers. Now, Sydney's a pretty cool bird. She likes to sing for us on occasion. So we're gonna see if we can get her to call. Ready? <laughs> about mammals. Now, we are mammals. So everything that I'm about to tell you about our fun Zoo Montana mammal friend also is going to apply to you, which is pretty, pretty cool. So, all right, friends, get ready to meet our marvelous mammal. We are going to meet Sherman, the guinea pig. All right, everybody, this is Sherman. They are one of our guinea pigs here at Zoo Montana. And Sherman is a mammal. Now mammals are very unique for many reasons. One of them is that they are endothermic, which means they create their own body heat. Just like Katie said, we use our own food to make our heat. Now, as you can see on Sherman, Sherman is covered in hair or fur. This is another unique characteristic of mammals. We have hair on our head, we have hair all over our arms, even on our toes. So all mammals are going to have hair. All mammals also give birth to live young. So unlike every other animal that we have talked about so far that lays eggs, mammals have our eggs inside of us and give birth to a fully formed live baby. All right, and they often look like mini versions of the adults. Mammals also produce milk for their offspring. So all mammals, all the females, will have mammary glands, and that's what produces the milk that the mothers feed their young. Many mammals also care for their babies. Granted, many bird species do as well, but mammals are world-renowned for their maternal care or motherly behaviors. All right, everybody, let's say goodbye to Sherman. All right, Grace Montessori friends, that concludes the end of today's lesson on vertebrates, invertebrates, and the five animal classes. Thank you so much for watching. It was so fun to do this for you guys. 
If you guys would like more fun animal zoological content, you can feel free to check out our website, zoomontana.org. We have a bunch of cool animal facts and lessons on there. We also do Facebook Lives every Saturday at 10 a.m. Those are also all up on our Facebook page that you can tune into, or they're also on the Zoo Montana YouTube channel where you can get endless fun animal information. Again, I am Educator Emily. I'm Educator Katie. And we're with Zoo Montana. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's lesson. Bye! Bye.